So welcome back to the sessions on columbar area and in this presentation we will be looking in detail into the skeletal system of columbar area. Okay. Uh, the endoskeleton of uh, birds as such they are quite light and completely ossified that is uh, bony in nature and contains no uh, marrow bone marrow and hence they are filled with air and is referred as pneumatic bones okay they are known as pneumatic Let's see. okay that is one uh, it is also uh, considered to be a flight adaptation because it makes the bones lighter okay because there are many bones which are uh, which don't have bone marrow inside and uh, filled with uh, what you call the air the air cavity it is okay so and hence it is referred as the Sorry, pneumatic bone. Okay, it is known as a pneumatic bone. Now, uh, the endoskeleton comprises, uh, we can uh, divide the uh, endoskeleton into two. Okay, the first is the appendicular skeleton and the axial skeleton. The axial skeleton, it is formed of the skull, the vertebral column, then the ribs. Okay, we can see here the skull, the whole vertebral column till here, then the ribs originating from there. And the sternum, which uh, keeps the ribs together. Okay, so uh, these comprises the axial skeleton, and the axial skeleton forms the axis of the body. Fine. The appendicular skeleton, on the other hand, they are they include the limbs, the four limbs and the hind limbs. That is the bones that support the wings, the then the uh, hind limbs, as well as the girdles, the pectoral and the pelvic girdle. So that forms the appendicular skeleton. Okay, so we have the axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton. The appendicular skeleton include the bones of the limbs and girdles, and it is with the help of this they are connected to the axial skeleton. The limbs are co connected to the axial skeleton by way of the girdles. Fine. So th those forms the axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton. And in pigeon specifically, the bones of the forearm and the hand, and that of the legs, they are non-pneumatic. That is, they are solid. They contains the bone marrow inside and in um, certain other uh, birds which are uh, good flyers like uh, birds of prey and uh, albatross and all they have wing and the long leg bones as well being pneumatic okay the long bones have no epiphysis at the ends the skeleton of the backbone and limb girdles allow to carry the weight of the body on the wings or on the legs and uh, uh, these are a few general features of the skeletal system of uh, uh, the birds um, with reference to columba. Okay, you can see the skull is very large but very light due to spongy bones. And uh, there has a complete fusion of bones so that it has no sutures. Especially with the skull, the bones are uh, completely fused without any sutures. But it is not deviated from the reptilian type of skull. And the number of bones are reduced, then jaw bones, they form the, uh, you can see, the beak, the lower and the upper mandibles, they are modified to form the uh, beak, toothless beak. Then the occipital condyle, there is only one, and hence it is monocondylian uh, type of skull. And then cranium is rounded, large uh, for accommodating a well-developed brain. Uh, autostylic uh, jaw suspension, and uh, uh, this is the... Uh, features re with respect to the skull or the cranium okay as per your syllabus you needn't learn too much in detail about the skull what you are supposed to learn is about the girdles okay so, uh, so you can see the pectoral and the pelvic girdle okay so uh, pectoral girdle as already mentioned the two girdles and the limbs they form the uh, appendicular skeleton and uh, the uh, pectoral girdle it is very stout and uh, bony structure connected with the sternum on either side of the uh, body to support the wings. You can see this part. Okay. So the whole structure, you can see a V-shaped structure. Okay. And this bone, right, this white bone plus the sternum here. So this forms the, actually this forms the pectoral girdle. Okay. Only this part from here. Okay. This V-shaped and extending scapula. Right, this is the actually the sternum. Okay, actually sternum is not part of the uh, girdle, but it is to the sternum the pectoral girdle is connected to. Okay, so girdle, if you ask, it is actually this part. Okay, coracoid, the clavicle, and the scapula. It forms the pectoral girdle. Okay, they are all stout structures, 
and it is on either side it consists of a uh, you can see the scapula it, it can be like uh, formed of we can say it is formed of two halves and each half is made up of a scapula coracoid and a clavicle okay uh, uh, when we speak about the scapula you can see here it is almost saber shaped isn't it saber sharp knife isn't it is a long flattened uh, slightly curved uh, saber shaped bone lying lying above the thoracic ribs you can see here okay so it is anterior to the ribs fine and uh, uh, parallel to the vertebral column the expanded anterior end of the scapula is firmly united with the coracoid by ligament and here this is it uh, you can see here it is connected with the uh, coracoid it is by way of a ligament and its anterior end bears a swollen depression forming a part of the glenoid cavity okay so here you can see glenoid posa so that so at this portion they have a depression which is referred as a, which actually form a part of the glenoid cavity glenoid cavity is actually a depression to which the uh, you can see the limbs are attached to and the glenoid cavity is uh, like formed of depressions of joint depressions actually depressions joined together and these depressions one of the contributions it is from the scapula side okay the glenoid end of the scapula it is produced into an acromion process to provide uh, articular surface to the clavicle to form a part of uh, and it, it, this form a part of the foramen triosium and suprascapula here it is uh, almost absent coracoid you can see here it is a stout bone uh, straight rod like directed downwards and it articulates with the coracoid groove on the uh, sternum you can see here it is uh, articulating with the sternum fine uh, at the base of the manubrium the upper end of the coracoid on its um, uh, what you call inner side articulates with the scapula here you, you can see right and uh, on its outer side it um, bears a deep cup shaped depression which forms a greater part of the glenoid cavity this upper end of um, coracoid is also produced into a hook like acrocoracoid process which articulates with the clavicle so the outer so outer part of the uh, what you call this coracoid possesses two structures one is a small depression which contributes to the formation of uh, what you call the glenoid cavity another is uh, a hook like acrocoracoid process uh, which articulates with the the clavicle okay now clavicles they are a pair of you can see uh, compared to the coracoid and scapula they are a pair of slender bones right curved and delicate rod like bones connected by their expanded upper ends with the scapula and uh, acrocoracoid process of uh, coracoid to enclose a circular coracoid triosium that is what is referred as a triosial canal isn't it so this forms a uh, what you call the foramen triosium okay now there is a structure here you can see furcula okay furcula it is ventrally the two clavicles are fused with a small interclavicle to form a laterally compressed disc or hypocladium okay here you can see this structure is known as a hypocladium okay and it is connected with the rostrum of the sternum by a ligament uh, uh, this part okay the v shaped bone uh, this uh, uh, formed by the fusion of clavicles on either side and interclavicle this v shaped bone is known as a furcula or the wish bone okay and uh, it works as a spring like connection between the two halves of the shoulder girdle so this is actually fused one and furcula is a very important feature uh, in bird skeletal system okay so we saw that uh, the pectoral girdle is it is composed of the scapula the coracoid and the clavicle right the scapula it extends here okay almost parallel to the vertebral column right coracoid it extends downward it connects with the sternum right and the uh, clavicle it fuses with the clavicle on the other side and it forms a v shaped bone which is referred as a furcula and this region it is referred as a hypocladium or the com laterally compressed disc uh, it, it is connected to the sternum by way of uh, ligament okay rostrum of the sternum uh, uh, it is connected with the rostrum of the sternum by way of ligament okay so this is what is the pectoral girdle is all about now regarding the pelvic girdle it consists of two separate halves you can see here this is one half starting from here you can see a structure okay here you can see right 
and another small bone extending below. Okay, this is one half. A similar half is present on the other side, in the other side as well. Here you can see, but it is almost seen fused. Okay, so this is one half, right? And this is other one. Okay, so the each half is uh, known as os innominatum. Okay, it is known as a os innominatum. So pelvic girdle is actually formed of two halves or two os innominata. Okay, it is os innominata. Right, each half is known as os innominata. So two os innominata uh, together forms the pelvic girdle. Right. And uh, you can see here this part, I'm sorry, uh, just one minute. Okay. So this part is known as the syncecrum. Okay. Syncecrum, it is formed by the fusion of the vertebrae, especially the sacral vertebrae and the caudal vertebrae. Right. Few of the caudal vertebrae plus the sacral vertebrae, it fuses together to form the syncecrum. Right. You can see a compact structure. And this pelvic osin nominatum, uh, each of the osin nominatum lies on either side of the syncecrum. Okay. Each ozone nominatum, on the other hand, it is composed of ilium, ischium, and pubis. You can see here, this part is the ilium. Fine, this is the ilium. Okay, and this one, it is the ischium. Right, and there is yet another bone over here. This is the pubis. Okay, similarly, on the other side also, they have. So, ilium, ischium, and pubis. This three together form a single ozone nominatum. And at the junction of these three bones, it is present a concavity, the acetabulum. You can see here, this is the part where these three bones meet. Okay, the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. Okay, and here there is a ca uh, cavity. And this cavity is known as acetabulum. And it is to, into this acetabulum, the hind limbs are articulating with. Okay, so uh, it provides surface for the articulation of the head of the femur. Okay, ilium, it is elongated. You can see here. Uh, and remarkably expanded bone extending both anterior and posterior to the acetabulum and uh, yeah uh, it's called pre acetabular part you can see here it is uh, anterior to the acetabulum this is the acetabulum isn't it so anterior to the acetabulum it extends uh, uh, like uh, anterior and posterior and hence it is known as a pre acetabular part and post acetabular part of uh, uh, ilium respectively okay so you, here you can see Right, and uh, this part is the pre-acetabular part, and this is the post-acetabular part of uh, ilium. Right, and the inner margin of ilium is fused with the transverse processes and neural spines of the uh, syncecrum here. Okay, it communicates with the uh, uh, the uh, transverse processes. We have already mentioned that the, the, the syncecrum is formed of the vertebrae, isn't it? And each vertebrae it do have transverse processes and neural spines. I hope you remember. Okay, and these uh, the inner part of the um, the ilium it is actually communicating with all or all, almost fused with the transverse processes and neural spines of the syncecrum. The outer surface of its anterior part of the anterior part like this this part is concave and the posterior part is fused with the ischium. Okay, this is the posterior part and it is fused with the ischium. Okay, and uh, ilium forms the dorsal part of the uh, acetabulum. This is the part. Okay. Now, on the outer surface above the acetabulum is a projection known as anti-trochanter, uh, which articulates with the great trochanter of femur. Now, regarding the ischium, this is a part. Okay, this is this part. Okay, ischium. And uh, here, ischium is also dorsoventrally flattened bone. It projects backwards behind the acetabulum and parallel to the posterior part of the ilium. Okay, you can see here, this is the ilium. So it is posterior, post, uh, parallel to the posterior part of the ilium. And ischium is fused posteriorly with the uh, ilium, but separated anteriorly from it by a ilioischiatic foramen. So here you can see there is an ilioischiatic foramen, right? And this is ilium and this is ischium. At this part, ilium and ischium is fused, but here it is separated. And this is not the ilioischiatic foramen. Okay. Now re regarding the pubic bone, this is a pubic bone, right? Uh, it is long, thin, curved, slender bone directed backward parallel to the ventral margin of the ischium with which it is uh, usually fused and it forms a ventral part of the acetabulum. 
Okay, behind the acetabulum, the pubis and ischium are separated by uh, oval opening, which is known as the obturator.